Next, we have a talk by Dr. Narasimha Pai, interventional cardiologist from KMC. He will be speaking on myocardial ischemia. Dr. Narasimha Pai. Yeah, thank you. I think after you have listened to the arrhythmias for probably the last hour, me, my colleague Dr. Rajesh, and then Tom would be enlightening you to our best abilities on how to diagnose myocardial ischemia. Myocardial ischemia, infarction, and then after treatment, whether your treatment has been successful or not, what are the markers of reperfusion? So before Rajesh touches on infarction, I will enlighten you what is myocardial ischemia. And if you don't treat ischemia properly, you will end up with a myocardial infarction. It's a continuum, so it's very important for us to know that there are three various phases of injury to the myocardium. The central zone is what is called the area of necrosis, where the muscle is totally dead. Surrounding that, you have an area of injury where the myocardium is partially salvageable and then a peripheral zone of ischemia where the muscle is very likely to be viable. So the surface ECG need not always pick up a myocardial ischemia. So when we talk of ischemia, we talk of the spectrum of acute coronary syndromes. You have a chronic stable angina where your resting ECG is absolutely normal. You have unstable angina which is again today classified as low risk, intermediate risk and high risk. Low and intermediate risk unstable angina, again your resting ECG is normal. Whereas only in the high risk category of unstable angina, what we term as NSTMI, you can get some ST depression and T wave inversion. Apart from that, in the unstable angina, most of the time, your surface ECG is normal. And only when a high risk unstable angina progresses on to become a myocardial infarction, you get the typical changes of what we describe as ST elevation or hyperacute T wave changes. So in a MI, which is fully evolved phase, you have an area of necrosis which is represented by the QS complexes. So whenever there is a full-fledged Q wave on the surface ECG, it means that already there is some amount of myocardial necrosis. Whereas only when there is a deviated ST segment, either ST depression or elevation, you have a site of injury. And if there are only T wave changes, you are lucky that you have picked up this patient early because you may just get a symmetrically deep T wave inversion which is pointed. So if you see this ECG, it's very simple. You will say that it's an evolved anteroval myocardial infarction because you already have a poor R wave progression from V1 to V4 with an established QS and T inversion from V2 to V5, V6. But the point to be noted is in V5, V6 you have well preserved R and you have T wave inversion in 1, AVL, V5, V6. So it's still possible that though this patient has had an anteroval myocardial infarction, you may have some area of salvageable myocardium. Whereas in a chronic stable phase, even the T wave changes would have reverted to normal and all that you are left is a Q wave because the ST segment which has elevated becomes depressed and then over a time of two to three months may revert to normal and the T inversion which was there may even become upright. So this is the typical phase of a myocardial infarction where you get a hyperacute ST up, tall T, chronic phase or established phase of myocardial infarction where there is a Q, ST segment still up, T wave inverted and then probably six months down the line where the ECG looks normal apart from an established QS complex. So coronary insufficiency is probably the earliest stage where you have not even had an NSTMI, where the ST segment may be depressed, may be horizontally down sloping, may be upward or downward sloping, the T wave becomes symmetrically inverted, sharp pointed, the QRST angle becomes widened, and sometimes all that you can get is an inverted U wave. So I'll just show what I was meaning. You have a widened QRST, you have an ST segment which is dropped below the baseline. So this is the isoelectric line. You can see almost three to four millimeter the ST segment has sagged down. The T wave is just becoming tall and the U wave has inverted. So these are the signs of coronary ischemia on an ECG. ST segment depression, symmetrically inverted T wave, widened QRST angle, 
and an inverted U wave. I know Rajesh will enlighten you on what are the signs of myocardial infarction, but it's very important for us to know which area or which territory is the coronary ischemia. Because moment you, you, you judge from a dual lead ECG, you should be fairly accurate enough to tell which vessel of the coronary artery is at stake. So it is important for us to know the anatomy of the dual lead ECG. So if you look at what leads represent a posterior wall involvement. A posterior wall involvement is not easily picked up by an ECG because it's the posteriormost chamber and no ECG lead truly represents the posterior wall. So what you get is changes in the lead V1 and V2 because it reflects the mirror image of the posterior wall. So instead of the ST segment elevation in the posterior wall, you get ST segment depression in lead V1 and V2 and you get a tall R waves in V1 and V2 which you normally don't see in a normal person. You have just a small R in V1 and probably an R becoming little better in V2 but if you have a tall R in V1, V2 associated with ST depression in V1 and V2, it may represent a true posterior wall ischemia or an infarction and the T wave becomes upright. So how do you know that changes are there in the inferior wall? I think in the first few hours of today's lecture you have been told which lead represents which portion of the myocardium. So the inferior wall is best represented by the leads which have an inferior axis. That is lead 2 which axis is 60, lead 3 whose axis is 110 and lead AVF whose axis is 90. So if you have to look at the changes in the inferior surface of the heart, you concentrate on three leads, lead 2, lead 3 and lead AVF. So once you are sure that there are changes only in 2, 3 AVF, your diagnosis is inferior wall ischemia or infarction. So if there are only T wave inversion and ST depressions, you say inferior wall ischemia. If there is ST segment elevation in the inferior leads, that is 2, 3 AVF, you say that it is inferior wall myocardial infarction. And more often than not, the vessel that is involved is the right coronary artery. Because when there is an inferior wall ischemia or infarction, you have two choices, either the right coronary artery or the circumflex artery. Whereas in an anterior wall, always it is the left anterior descending or the LAD which is the culprit. Now, which leads represent the lateral wall of the heart? It is the lead 1 and lead AVL because the axis of lead 1 is normally 0 and AVL is minus 30. So these are also called as the high lateral leads 1 and lead AVL. So if you have high lateral you have the low lateral as well and they are the leads V5 and V6. So if you have changes in 1 and AVL only you say it's a lateral wall ischemia or an infarction. If the changes extend to 1 AVL V5 and V6 then it is most likely either a large circumflex or one of the large OMs or the large diagonal which is at fault. So if you have changes in all the leads, that is 1, AVL, V5 and V6, that means the entire lateral wall is involved, so you have a larger area of ischemia. So we have finished inferior, I think you are with me, 2, 3 AVF is inferior, 1, V1 and V2 indirectly represents the posterior, 1 AVL represents the high lateral, V5, V6 represents the low lateral and if you have combination of 1 AVL, V5, V6, it represents the entire lateral. It's very simple, it's like mathematics in cardiology. So if you have V3 and V4 changes, only in lead V3 and V4, it represents the anterior heart wall and more often than not the vessel that is involved is the left anterior descending artery or the LAD. You have changes only in V1 and V2. They are called the septal leads. So if you have ST depression or ST elevation in V1 and V2, it is a simple septal infarct. So this table summarizes the entire story for you. The blue color is the inferior 2-3 AVF. V1, V2 is septal. V3, V4 is anterior. 1 AVL is lateral, V5, V6 is low lateral and 
depending on the combination you can make a diagnosis sometimes you have an inferior associated with lateral if it is a large right coronary artery or a large circumflex vessel if you have a proximal LAD occluded you have changes starting from V1, V2, V3, V4, V5 sometimes even 1, AVL, V5 and V6 whereas if it is a mid LAD you have changes only in the septal if you have in the apex you have changes only in the V5 or V6 so once we have done the anatomical localization this is the normal QRS where you have a PQRS T normal ST segment normal T and then when there is ischemia you have ST segment sagging down and T wave getting inverted it's just a continuing spectrum between ischemia injury and infarction in ischemia there is lack of oxygenation to the myocardium so you have only STT changes and T inversion in injury when the ischemia becomes prolonged we have the ST segment going up and when there is a full-fledged thickness involvement of the myocardium you have death of the tissue and infarction where you have established Q waves okay so what is myocardial ischemia it's a situation where the coronary blood flow within the coronary artery is limited to a point where the oxygen needs of the myocardial muscle cannot be met so there is basically myocardial hypoxia minor episodes of cardiac ischemia tend to cause little long-term damage to the muscle so if there is an acute ischemia you may just have some arrhythmias like VT and patient may collapse even though there is no true infarct you have the same ischemia in the right coronary artery patient may just have syncope and collapse because he may just have bradycardia or transient heart blocks whereas you have a large anterior wall ischemia patient may just land up with a cardiac arrest due to a ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation or sometimes it may just be a sudden cardiac death whereas severe or lengthy episodes of ischemia can lead to infarction and sometimes you have collective episodes of minor ischemic episodes which sum up to become what is called a ischemic cardiomyopathy which is very common in diabetics you have some ischemia no STT changes some ST sagging which reverts in four to five days of heparin another episode of ischemia six to seven days later or maybe six months later no infarction on ECG ECG may be normal repeat the echo after an year his ejection fraction may be 30 with multiple wall motion abnormalities so cumulative episodes of ischemia silent ischemia or symptomatic ischemia can lead to cardiomyopathy in the long run and the symptoms of ischemia I think all of you are very well aware that is angina see this ECG patient had severe chest pain ST segment up V1, V2, V3, V4 so your diagnosis is hyperacute myocardial infarction anterior wall culprit vessel LAD okay this patient was treated after half an hour see this ECG no changes absolutely normal ECG sometimes it can be spontaneous also 30 minutes after the initial patient is pain free asymptomatic ST segments are isoelectric and the same ECG now looks normal so don't say that he doesn't have coronary artery disease so when you see an ECG like this transient STT changes next ECG after half an hour is normal you repeat serial ECGs maybe after six hours you will see some T inversion in the anterior leads also the cardiac enzymes very important because I told you that chronic stable angina low risk unstable anginas your resting ECG can be normal if it gives some changes it's a bonus if it does not give rise to changes you ask for enzymes because if the cardiac enzymes will definitely be elevated either your CPKMB or troponin so ask for enzymes so here it revealed no evidence of acute myocardial infarction disappearance of the ST elevation and absence of clinical and ECG evidence of infarction and subsequent examination indicates that initial ECG is representative of a severe acute and reversible ischemia last two slides before I turn down see this left ventricular cavity a thick septum you can see this epicardial vessel smaller branches perfusing the myocardium patient has chest pain on exertion your resting ECG absolutely normal no myocardial wall motion abnormality 
visavi this is the ecg absolutely normal visavi the second patient mild left ventricular dilatation tight stenosis in the epicardial vessel the perfusion vessels of the myocardium are at stake there is mild left ventricular wall dilatation the subendocardial region of the muscle doesn't receive adequate blood flow so you have minor stt changes on the ecg st depression and t inversion what we previously used to call a subendocardial infarction what we today call as nstmi or high risk unstable angina but the damage is already there so ischemia happens when there is inadequate oxygen to the tissues the first area of the myocardium that is affected is the subendocardial region represented only by minor stt changes and t inversion and if you don't be alert it can lead to a myocardial infarction thank you yes yes rajesh is touching on that that's why i didn't include those in the ecg no normally you have no isolated true post theoretically there is but normally it is associated with some inferior where there is an associated post oval myocardial infarction true posterior we call it a true posterior wall myocardial infarction in isolation is very rare those are the changes that we described to you mostly it is the right coronary artery which is so you have an inferior with a true posterior or inferior with a posterior invariably you will have changes in the 2 3 avf leads no you need not normally there, that's what i told you isolated posterior wall myocardial infarction alone is quite rare normally it is in combination with an inferior with a posterior so this ecg criteria of seeing only v1 and v2 normally does not arise because you will have changes obviously in the inferior territory yes if there is a left main involvement or severe triple vessel disease you can have st segment elevation in lead avr there is a different criteria for left main altogether there should be more than 7 mm st depression in the other leads st segment elevation in avr and normally doesn't satisfy one particular anatomic territory yeah widen qrst angle is a sign of ischemia widen qrst angle is a sign of ischemia yes you can have non specific t wave inversions females you can get patients who have mitral valve prolapse you can get non specific stt changes hypothyroidism you can get non specific stt changes the difficult you have to look at the patient and if you have suspicion get an echo and a thread mill done am i presenting with lbbb is common rajesh is touching on those criteria because my topic was only myocardial ischemia so i didn't include the ecg of lbbb with an mi prince metal angina from acute mi normally in a prince metal angina the st elevation is transient reverts back to normal you need not have established q waves or subsequent st depressions and t inversions whereas in a transmural infarct like in an acute myocardial infarction you have all these changes coming through thank you thank thank you sir i request dr prashant ym assistant professor of medicine fathermulla medical college to present dr narsim pai with a certificate of appreciation